I've just awoken from another dream. This dream, it's another train dream. Um, and it started off with an introduction before I got on the train, I do believe, from memory. Um, and I was listening to an introduction of, of, of somebody prophesying about, about things. And it was, the introduction was quite profound, but then I found myself on um, a carriage on this train. And I was, I heard that the, the same guy was prophesying. I was really intently listening and just amazed. And as I was listening, I realized that I, I, I thought, I thought this man was just prophesying. I thought I was the only one on the, on the carriage at first. Then I realized that the carriage was full of people. And he was prophesying to everybody on the train. And I was quite amazed by this. I, did, I couldn't remember why, but I was quite amazed by all this. And I noticed this train was, I was traveling at quite an amazing speed. And it was going through territory that I'd never even knew existed. Quite amazing territory. But then the track started going we were going that fast that the track actually had to tilt on angles when we were going around corners to keep the train on the tracks. And we got to a point where we were going so quickly and we were going around corners that the train was actually on completely on its side, 90 degrees to the ground, going around this big sweeping corner. And I was looking and I'm thinking, wow, this is incredible. This train is actually going, is actually on its side. And I remember commenting while I was on the carriage to everybody saying, this is amazing. This territory and this place we're going and this, the speed that we're traveling at and the fact that this train is going sideways amazed me. But that wasn't, that was only the beginning. As we're traveling, we're, we're getting to, to, to a destination that was, it was sort of seemed underground, but it wasn't. And it was in some land that I'd never even seen before. It was just amazing. It was just, I don't know whether anybody else had seen this land either. Maybe some people had, I don't know. But the train, uh, it wasn't even necessary for there to be tracks where we were going. <laughs> there were not even tracks. And the train was going along this ground where there were no tracks. And I was just stunned. And I I, 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 I seem to remember commenting. I said, wow. And I, I think from memory, somebody commented. I don't know whether it, was, whether, me, whether it was me that commented or somebody else commented saying where we're going, we don't even need tracks. And I remember thinking, wow. And I was just absolutely stunned. I was just amazed. So yeah, the main big part of this was this just incredible train journey with this guy prophesying, prophesying profound things and me being absolutely transfixed by this prophecy. So um, it would seem that the other dreams of anything to go by, um, the train dreams that I've had about the Holy Spirit guiding this train and you know other train dreams where I've been on the train and God's called me to be up the front carriage driving the train, but always the train has been on a track. You know, I've been controlling how fast it goes and whether it starts and stops, but the track has been ultimately controlling where it goes. And I believe the tracks in these other dreams have been the tracks that have been laid by God. Anyway, the astounding thing about this dream was that the train was going so fast. Amazing, incredible speed. I wasn't scared at all. I was actually enthralled. I was just absolutely amazed, awed. And the fact that this train went on, um, like the tracks were, they had the train going literally sideways. And then it got to a point, like I said, where there was no tracks at all. Somebody saying, where we're going, we don't need tracks. And I was like, wow. Then I remember getting to a destination where we were going and I was with four other, three other people there was four of us all up I think it was there was two other girls and there was one guy 
I don't know whether the, I think the guy I was with was the guy that was prophesying. I can't remember. But where we got to, it was like a big sort of a motel, but it, it sort of wasn't. It sort of was, but it was like a big residence place. So I don't know. It was like a big multi-story place with all these different, huge big place. And I remember getting to a spot where there were, where there were four beds. And it was a sort of a small room where there were beds. And there's a spot to put our luggage. I remember looking and thinking, this is perfect. This is just this, this perfect. I know I don't, I don't remember why it was perfect, but I remember thinking it was perfect. I put all my, my luggage down and I had my cat with me. Neo was with me. I remember he wanted to explore everything that was going on. So he started exploring everything and I was trying to make sure that all the doors were shut so he couldn't get out. So I didn't want him sort of getting lost and, and going to all these other places. And naturally, being the inquisitive one that he is, he managed to find all the nooks and crannies and he managed to find all the little exit ways out of all the doors. And he went out of the main area we were in and into another area, which was like a big kitchen area. And I followed him into that. And then he found his way out this other door. I thought, oh, no, you don't. I thought, no, you can't go out there, Puss, because this is somewhere where you'll get outside, like out into the main area, like outside into the main part of the building, out of our residence area. And he leapt for this spot in a door, and I, I, I grabbed him before he got out. And I picked him up and I carried him. He didn't want to be picked up. He wanted to wriggle out of my arms, but I managed to keep him in my arms till we got back to sort of like the, the sleeping quarters again. And I put him in there. He got out of my arms, and I thought, right, I've got to find some tape, and I've got to tape up these... It was like this this flap in this door. It was like two flaps. It was like, I don't know, it, was, it didn't seem like it was a cat. It was like a cat door, but it didn't seem like it was made for cats. It was, and it sort of had a gap around it. Anyway, I, 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 was, I wanted to try and find some tape, electrical tape or something, or some sort of like gaffer tape or something to tape up this door, this flap, so he couldn't get out temporarily. And I found some tape, but as I was finding the tape, he got out of this door, and then I remember in this big kitchen area and there was this huge big like exhaust fan thing or something that, that I'd, I'd gotten back in through the first time, that's right. And it swung up. It was like on a door. It was this big steel, stainless steel door, this big fan contraption thing. And I remember Puss had got out through it because it had a small gap in the bottom and he, got, he fit through it, but I couldn't fit through it. So I had to swing this huge big door thing up. I was trying to swing it up. There was this little knob thing on it, and I was trying to turn this knob to get the door open, but instead of getting the door open, this knob activated the fan. And I thought, oh, no, now what do I do? And I remember it being like an oven fan, and it was producing heat, and it was really weird because it was in a door, but anyway. Um, I thought, wow, this is, this is a real problem now because I can't get this thing open. And I tried to flip this lever thing the other way, and... I got electric shock from it, I think, from memory. And the, the door activated, and it was now producing heat and everything as well. I thought, oh, I've got no hope of getting out of this now. So I thought, I've got to try and find an alternative way to get out of this place. So I did. I found another doorway out, and I got out, and I thought, well, Puss is well and truly out now. He's, I don't know where he's going to be. And I walked down this corridor into seeing these sort of other areas and it was sort of like hospital area and I thought this is strange and there was patients in this area in beds I thought oh this is a bit odd and I remember calling puss 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 and calling for him and he didn't turn up and I thought oh there's a whole lot of levels a whole lot of different floors and I thought wow he could be anywhere and I thought no oh. and I was a bit distressed at this point thinking where's my pussycat you know, I hope he's all right. There's, I, I, I don't know. I was concerned about him. And um, as I'm walking, I walked into this other area, and it was like somebody's house. It was open, though. There was no, like, front door or anything in it. I just walked, like, straight into the lounge living area. And um, as I walked in there, there's these other cats. There was one cat that, 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 that I saw that it wasn't Neo. Then I saw these other two cats. Well, first I saw one cat, and it looked like Neo. Big, fluffy pussy cat. But then this cat had white markings on its back as well. I thought, oh, that's not Neo. 
And I walked along and I saw this other cat that looked just like the first cat. And I thought, maybe that's Neo because I could only see its face. And it looked just like Neo. But then, well, ginger, big fur and everything. But then I looked and I thought, no, that's not Neo either. It's got the same white markings as the other cat. And then there was like a, a kitchen bench or kitchen counter for American people. And there was people. It was like a family living there. And I remember there was two kids, a couple of kids and I wanted to ask them about, have you seen my cat? And they said, oh, well, we'll ask our mum and dad. I went up to this kitchen bench and I, I wanted to ask the mum and dad. I said, can you keep an eye out for my pussycat? I said, have you, you know, have you seen my pussycat? And they said, no. And, and I, I asked whether they could keep an eye. I think they said they were going to pray. So they must have been Christian. I think, I, I can't remember whether that, that's quite right, but... In this dream, whether my recollection is quite right, but I think they were, I think they said they were going to pray. And anyway, I think it was about this point that I woke up. So at this point, I can't recall that much more, but um, that's about all I can recall from this dream at the moment. And if I can recall, look, I've only had about three hours sleep at the moment, so I'm probably going to go back to sleep and see if I can get some more sleep.